What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfect Genetis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my biology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the cell, cell division, mitosis, and meiosis. We talked about the skeleton of your cell, known as the cytoskeleton. But today, we shall talk about your skeleton skeleton, the bony skeleton of your body. And of course, it's not just bones, you have bones and cartilages, but today we shall focus on the bones. How many bones do you have? It depends on how you count, but the most typical classification counts them as 206 bones, and today we're gonna count them one by one. Let's talk about regions. This is your skull. All of this is your vertebral column. This is the shoulder girdle. This is the pelvic girdle. This is the thoracic cage. These are the upper limbs or upper extremities. These are the lower limbs or lower extremities. Question, why are anatomy professors so funny? Answer, because they study the humerus. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This is my biology playlist, and I have another playlist called anatomy and a third one called physiology. First, do humans have an exoskeleton or an endoskeleton? What's the difference? An exoskeleton is something that covers your body from the outside. And as you grow as an organism, you need to shed away this exoskeleton and dispose of your skeleton. Some insects and crustaceans are like that. We call them arthropods. Arthro means joint or articulation. Pods is from the Greek pudos, which means feet, as in the French lupide meaning the feet. When your foot has a problem, you go to a podiatrist. Okay, humans do not have exoskeletons. What humans do have is an endoskeleton. It's a chassis within your body. It does not cover your body from the outside, but it provides you with a skeleton on the inside, and you do not need to shed your exoskeleton. Humans have an endoskeleton. In the midline, it's called the axial skeleton, and this includes the skull, the vertebral column, the rib cage, as well as appendicular skeleton. It's made of shoulder girdle upstairs and the pelvic girdle or the hip downstairs, and then upper extremities and lower extremities. We have them on the sides, right and left, so we call them appendicular. From the word appendix, which means something that's attached to the main axial. Why do we need bones? Well, many functions. Mechanical support, attachment for muscles, do the locomotion with me, protective function to protect the internal organs. For example, the skull is protecting the brain. Metabolic functions. You know that bones have matrix and minerals. The minerals include calcium and phosphorus. Let's say that your blood is lacking calcium and phosphorus right now. The bone will break itself a little to bring some of that calcium and phosphorus out of the bone and into the blood. So that's a metabolic function. Moreover, within your bone, there is a core called the bone marrow. The bone marrow is important for hematopoiesis. Hemato from hematology means blood. Poesis means synthesis or formation or creation. So hematopoiesis means formation of blood cells. Your red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets come from the bone marrow of your bone. Next, let's count all the bones in your body. Here's the skull. How many bones? 22 bones. I'll tell you about the name of each one soon. Then you have the vertebral column or the spine. How many bones? 33 bones. Each one is called a vertebra, plural vertebrae. So one, two, three, four, five, until you reach 33 bones in total. You have seven vertebra in your neck. We call them cervical or cervical. You have 12 vertebrae in your thorax. We call them 12 thoracic. Then five in your lumbar region. We call them five lumbar vertebrae. Five in your sacrum. We call them the five sacral segments. And four bones that are fused together in your coccyx. So that's 33 vertebrae in total, okay? Next, the thoracic cage. You have one sternum in the midline, not shown in this picture for some reason. And 24 ribs, 12 on the right and 12 on the left. 1 plus 24 is 25. Let's talk about the shoulder girdle. There is a clavicle on the right and clavicle on the left, scapula on the right and scapula on the left. These are four in total. Then we have the hip girdle or the pelvic girdle to be more accurate. You have one hip bone on the right, one hip bone on the left for a total of two. 
Next, let's talk about the arm and the forearm. The arm has only one bone, the humerus. The forearm has two bones, radius on the outside, ulna on the inside, provided that you're standing in the anatomical position, which is this position. Your thumbs should be on the outside. Next, let's talk about the thigh and the leg. The thigh has a femur on the right, a femur on the left. The leg has tibia and fibula. The tibia is on the inside, fibula is on the outside. And do not forget the patella, a patella on the right and a patella on the left. That's your kneecap. So femur, tibia, fibula, and patella, these are four times two because you have one on the right, one on the left, and therefore you have eight. The wrist has eight bones on the right and eight bones on the left for a total of 16. But the ankle has only seven bones on the right, seven bones on the left, seven times two is 14. The hand has five metacarpals and 14 phalanges. Break them down for me. The 14 phalanges are, well, each finger has three phalanges. So how many fingers you have? You have five fingers and that's your thumb right here. Each one of them has three phalanges. So three phalanges, three, 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 except the thumb, which has two. Three plus three is six. Three plus three is six. 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 2 is 14 phalanges. How about your foot? The foot has 5 metatarsals, which are equivalent to the 5 metacarpals in your wrist. And the foot also has 14 phalanges. Each toe has 3 phalanges, except the big toe, which has only 2. Don't say thumb when you're talking about the foot. The foot does not have a thumb, it has a big toe. So 22 plus 33 plus 25 plus 4 plus 2 plus 6 plus 8 plus 16 plus 14 plus 38 plus 38 will give you a total of 206 bones in the typical adult human. However, neonates have more because some of their bones have not fused together yet. As you grow and grow and grow some more, some of your bones fuse together and you will end up having 206 bones in total as an adult human being. Shamefully, this classification, this tally of 206 bones, missed some of the bones including the ossicles of your ear. Each ear has three ossicles. An ossicle is a little bone, a tiny bone. So your right ear has three and the left ear has three for a total of six bony ossicles in your ear. The first one is called the malus. The second one is called the incus. The third one is called the stapes, otherwise known as the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. Why do you call this the hammer? Because it hits and whacks into the anvil. Why do we call this bone stirrup? Because it looks like a stirrup. What's a stirrup? If you have ever tried horseback riding, there is something that you should put your shoe into. It's called the stirrup. This tiny bone inside your ear has the shape of a stirrup. So these six lovely bony ossicles of the ear were not counted among the 206 bones. There is another bone that was not counted, and this is the hyoid bone. Where can you find your hyoid bone? Here. It's at the top of your neck, or you can say at the base of your mouth, below your mouth. If you actually stick two fingers here, let's say the index finger of the left hand and the index finger of the right hand together at this part of the neck, you can actually feel the hyoid bone and you can even move it to the right and to the left. The hyoid bone looks like this. It has a body, two greater horns and two lesser horns. You know what else was not counted? Your 32 adult teeth. 16 upstairs in the upper jaw called the maxilla and another 16 downstairs in the lower jaw called the mandible. Let's count those in the upper jaw. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Repeat another 16 downstairs and you end up with a total of 32 teeth. Are teeth considered bones? Well, your bones have matrix and mineral. Your teeth are the same. A medical condition known as hyperfluorosis can damage your bones and teeth. A congenital anomaly that damages the bone is called osteogenesis imperfecta. It has an equivalent that damages the teeth, which is called odontogenesis imperfecta. So yeah, your teeth are technically bones, but unfortunately they are not counted among the 206 bones. Next, I promised to tell you about the names of all of the skull bones. First, I'll start with the skull bones that are not paired, meaning you only have one of them and not two. The first one is the mandible. The second one is the frontal. The third one is the ethmoid bone. The fourth is the sphenoid bone. 
The fifth is the occipital bone. And the last one is the vomer, which is about here. Then let's talk about the bones that have an equivalent one on the other side. The paired bones. You have two parietal bones, one on the right and one on the left. Two temporal bones, one on the right and one on the left. Two zygomatic bones or zygoma, one on the right and one on the left. Two lacrimal bones, one on the right and one on the left. Two maxillary bones, the upper jaw, one on the right, one on the left. Two nasal bone, one on the right and one on the left. Two palatine bones that cannot be shown here. And the last concha, which is the inferior concha. You have one on the right and one on the left. Next, do we have bones in the body where we can tell the difference between males and females? The answer is yes, we have many. The easiest one is the hip bone. There are more than 15 differences between the male pelvis and the female pelvis, but these are not the only bones that are sex specific by any stretch of the imagination. If you want to know about all of them and all of these differences, they have been tabulated for decades in forensic pathology or forensic medicine textbooks. One of the coolest books that you will ever read. Forget romance novels. Forensic pathology is the way to go. Next, let's talk about the hand. In your wrist, you have eight carpal bones, but in your ankle, you have seven tarsal bones. After this, we have five metacarpals in the hand and five metatarsals in the foot. Next, we have the phalanges. Each finger has three phalanges, except the thumb, which only has two. As for the foot, each one has three phalanges, except the big toe, which only has two. Next, bones that are counted as one, but they actually have several pieces. For example, look at the stern. It's counted as one bone. However, it has three pieces. This is the manubrium, this is the body of the sternum, and this is the xiphoid process of the sternum. All of this is called the hip bone, but it's made of three pieces. This is the ilium, this is the ischium, this is the pubis. As you get older and older and older, your bones will change shapes. And that's why before the DNA tests, before governments took meticulous birth records. A good doctor or a good forensic pathologist who is worth a damn can tell you the difference and can tell you your age just by examining your bones. Because for thousands and thousands of years of antiquity, many people did not really know how old they are. Next, look at the mandible. This is the mandible of a neonate. This is a mandible of a child. This is a mandible of an adult. And this is the mandible of your grandparents. I mean, look at this. The sockets that should carry the teeth are blunted. And that's why your grandfather or grandmother needs dentures because all of their teeth have fallen out. Why did all of their teeth fall out? Because the mandible did shrink in size. For those of you who believe the online gurus who promise you to, quote, reverse aging, just let me x-ray their mandible today and x-ray their mandible again when they turn 100. I guarantee you, their mandible will shrink. Their mandible will age, no matter how many carrots they eat. There is nothing more hilarious than people in their 30s giving advice on longevity. Dude, you're 35. Live until 150 and I will take your longevity advice. Freaking amateurs. Quiz time, question of the day. What is the longest bone in the body? Please let me know your answer in the comments. Take a look at my biology playlist, anatomy playlist, physiology playlist to learn more. To learn about all the drama that takes place in your kidney's proximal convoluted tubule, distal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, collecting ducts, etc., download my kidney physiology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It comes with videos, notes, and cases. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine, chemistry, and physics make perfect sense.